Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, Jazakallah khair for everyone who's watching. Inshallah, um, we will start uh, our, our talk today um, with the topic of continuing the blessings of Ramadan with Dr. Shahid Rafiq. Um, Dr. Shahid Rafiq uh, um, was, 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 is on the National Shura of Ikna right now, and uh, formerly he was the president of Ikna, Texas. Um, inshallah, before, uh, before we, we start um, with him, uh, and before I hand it off to him, I would like to start with some recitation of the Quran, like we start all events. So, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يوم تجد كل نفس ما عملت خير محضرا وما عملت وما عملت من سوء تود لو أن بينها لو أن بينها وبينه أمدا بعيدا ويحذركم الله نفسه والله رؤوف بالعباد قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني فاتبعوني يحببكم الله ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم والله غفور رحيم قل أطيعوا الله والرسول فإن تولوا فإن الله لا يحب الكافرين إن الله اصطفى آدم ونوحا وآل إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم وآل عمران على العالمين ذرية بعضها من بعض والله سميع عليم um, إن شاء الله بتاع أود أن أهند رأب تأكد رفيق إن شاء الله أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس قد جاءتكم معيذة من ربكم وشفاء لما في الصدور وهدى ورحمة للمؤمنين قل بفضل الله وبرحمته فبذلك فليفرهوا هو خير مما يجمعون صدق الله العظيم My respected brothers and my sisters Today inshallah the subject of my talk is continuing the blessings of Ramadan. And inshallah, the goal of my talk in 30 minutes is to make myself understand and also I will pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He opens our hearts that we all can have this journey of understanding together. My goal in 30 minutes will be to talk about the purpose of life, to talk about the sohba, the company which is very much needed to continue the blessings of Ramadan after Ramadan. I will talk about a few things which like by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most. And then I'm going to talk about a concept which is a lost treasure of all of us as a Muslim and that is baraka, the blessing, the delight Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts you know in our actions. And in the last I'm going to share with you a few stories which can make our yaqeen, faith, certainty you know more firm on Quran and on the path we are all, we all are following. Let's go first. You know, Ramadan is kind of a drill. It's a practice. It's a tarbiya course for one month. That for Sahaba, it was that before Ramadan, for six months, they used to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let them witness another Ramadan. And after they used to go through this drill, this training, this course, this tarbiya of Ramadan, they were able to use these blessings for next six months. 
from the fruits of Ramadan, from the blessings of Ramadan, from the baraka of Ramadan. So it fails the purpose. If I go through any tarbiya, any training, any course, any drill, and after that course, drill, tarbiya is over, if I go back to square one, that means the whole purpose of the tarbiya failed. And you all know the purpose of Ramadan wa is Ya yuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum thiyamu kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattakun. So the whole purpose of this drill is that when you for 30 days make your heart win and your throat, you defeat your throat, you defeat your desires, you defeat the shaitan. And after 30 days, if we are, if we cannot continue the blessing, the taqwa, the God consciousness, the connection we have developed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means all this 30 day drill actually failed, my brothers and my sisters. So inshallah today, as we all are passing through a journey, life is a journey. You know, is a journey, we get life first, then we learn. We do lots of mistakes because we do not know the right answer at the stage of our life. That's why a famous phrase that if I knew what I know now, I may have not done what I did at that time in my life. And this is very true for all of us that we all go through this journey and we do mistakes and we learn and we move on. So inshallah, from this experience of this month of Ramadan, this year, we have learned a lot of things that, and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives you and me tawfiq that we can really catch these opportunities. And then we can really put these learnings in our action, in our life. The first thing which I will say is the hadith of Prophet in which he says, Allah like the most if you do any little deed, but with consistency. Any little good deed with consistency. You know, Allah is not expecting from you and me that we are praying, you know, long prayers or we are staying all up night. He is expecting from us few little sincere actions that we can hold on to, we can continuously do. For this Ramadan, I will say it set certain goals that after Ramadan is over, where do you want to see yourself by the time next Ramadan comes? See yourself in a mirror and set certain goals for yourself that inshallah in this year, before I will witness next Ramadan, inshallah, with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I want to see these changes in my life. I want to develop, you know, more relationship with Quran. I want to memorize certain portions of Quran. I want to read some tafsir of Quran. I want to read the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu I want to be nice with my family. I want to have some plan that I can help the community. So try to set certain goals for yourself. The next thing, my brother, is sohba the company. Wallahi, these days, we lost this tradition. You know, in, in old days, in good old days, we used to have a good company at home. We used to have, you know, halakat, you know, gatherings of righteous people that you can sit and you can learn and you can energize yourself, you can inspire yourself. And these days, because life has become so self-centered that we are just worried about ourselves, And if we pass that, you know, we are just concerned about maybe our family, but most of us, we don't go beyond that. So because life has become so self-centered, so this is one of the important thing that try to find the people that you can hang on with the people you can attach with, 
the people you can sit with them and they can remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, shaitan is always there to whisper in our ears. And the person who is alone, it's very easy for shaitan to get over that person and to influence him or her. So it's very important, my brothers and my sisters, especially in this time and age, to find the company of brothers and sisters, like-minded brothers, that they can really bring that blessing of reminder of Akhirah, reminder of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They can remind you if you go on different direction, they can bring you back on the right track. This is very much needed. The next thing I will say is have some purpose in life. You know, most of us, uh, we live a life without any purpose. Imam Ibn Qayyam rahmatullahi has said very rightly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created animals, humans, and angels. Animals, they have only desires. They have no purpose in life. Angels, they have purpose, but they have no desires. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created humans that they have both. They have desires and they have purpose. So if we have more, we are living a life more just for desires. So we are living a life like an animal. But if we live a life more with purpose, so we become more angelic. That's why Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullahi has said very rightly that humans because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created human as the ashraful makhlukat. So humans are the one they can reach to this level of angels and even better than angels. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them this uva, this power, this option that they can control their desires and they can raise in the purpose of their life. So have purpose in life. That's why, you know, there was a famous uh, psychologist, Victor Franklin. This is the psychologist who was captured at the time when there was a war going on in Germany against Jews and World War was going on. Victor Franklin and his wife has written a book afterward. And they have written, you know, when we were witnessing so many millions of people dying in front of us. Some of them, they were dying because of the torture. And most of them, they were dying just because witnessing that torture, just seeing that torture. Victor Franklin says the only thing which was giving us hope and which was making us to live was the purpose. And the purpose and conviction to that purpose. That was the only thing which was giving us some motivation to live. People who did not have any purpose in life, no conviction to their purpose, they were just dying right and left just by seeing that torture. You know, there was a study done by five of the major universities of America. And they have studied from 2008 to 2018, 500,000 people the most successful people in the world. And one of the quality of these people who had success in this dunya, they had healthy life and they lived long life as well. One of the common quality of these people was that they had some purpose in life. And for you and me, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has already given us a purpose in our life. And our purpose is that we want to live this life to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We want to live a life of a good Muslim. We want to live a life of a good human being. We want to be successful in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on that day. This is purpose of our, our life, to help out the humanity, to reach out to people and deliver the message of Islam. My brothers and my sisters, I will humbly request all of you including myself, then let's, you know, refresh our Iman. Let's, you know, let's refresh our commitment to this deen. And let's have conviction that, yes, I will have purpose of life and I will devote most of my 
energy towards that purpose. Another thing which I want to talk today is then you have, we have lost one beautiful treasure of our being. And that treasure is the concept of baraka. You know, most of the time we feel like that what I have in my hand, this is what I need. If I have $10, I feel like this is my power. So why I want to make it 20, I want to make it 100, I want to make 1000. But we don't know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can put baraka in my $10 that I can achieve from this $10 what I cannot achieve with $1,000. And a lot of time, our problem is like that man. You know, we say we don't have time, brother. We are so busy. We are doing so many things, taking care of family, living in America, you know, going for work. You know, there was a man and he was cutting trunk of a tree. And there was another man passing by. He saw this man cutting a tree. He left him cutting. And after four or five hours, when this other man came back, he saw this old man is still doing the same, cutting the trunk of the tree. And he asked this old man, what are you doing? He, say, he said, you know, I'm just trying to cut the tree, this trunk of this uh, tree. He said, how, is, why, how come this is taking so long for you? He said, because the, the tooth of my saw are not sharp enough. That's why it's taking too long. So the man asked him, why don't you sharpen the teeth of your saw? The man said, I don't have time for that. Wallahi, same situation we have. That we don't have time for things which can bring blessing and baraka and delight in our life. And because of that, we can achieve what we are supposed to achieve in four or five hours, we can achieve in half an hour. And we will be more satisfied. We will feel more content. We will have more peace in our life. And that is the treasure we are missing, you know, in our life, my brothers and my sisters. And Prophet ﷺ has said, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put baraka in the first hours of the day. And most of us, we miss that. Prophet Muhammad has said that if you wake up in the morning and the worry you have in the morning is to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that day, the risk Allah has assigned for you, Allah will bring that risk in front of you. And end of the day, you will feel accomplished. You will feel satisfied. You will feel happy that you have achieved your goal. But if you wake up in the morning and the worry you have in your mind, you know, I'm going to go and make money. I'm going to struggle for this thing or that thing. But your concern is not pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to spread your risk all over the place. And you will struggle all day long. You will get this risk Allah has written for you, but end of the day, you will be exhausted. You will be tired and you will feel like that you have achieved nothing today. And you will feel like you are drained. My brothers, that's why this is the recommendation that we start our day with Fajr Salah. Fajr Salah with Jama. Aqimi salata li duluki shamsi ila ghasaqi layli wa Quran al-Fajr. Inna Quran al-Fajri kana mashhuda because the Quran read in Fajr will be witness for you. And I will witness to you if we practice this, that we start our day with having Fajr Salah when inshallah our masajids are open in the masjid and you start, you, you will see the baraka right and left, my brother. And you will feel so contained, happy, satisfied, sakina in your heart because of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are a couple of uh, tips I will share with you. One is that make sure that continue your relationship with Quran after Ramadan is over. So for that, I will suggest just one ayah a day. 
one ayah day just pick that i will read tafsir of one ayah a day and i can assure you my brothers once you will continue this love of quran in your heart after month or two you will feel like that you want to read more you will not stop at one ayah because once you take one step step in the path of allah subhanahu wa taala allah's promise is that he is going to facilitate our path he is going to facilitate our path the only condition is that with sincerity i take one step and allah subhanahu wa taala will take care of the rest the second practical advice i have for myself and for everybody is to brothers take care of your salah after ramadan salah salah is the most important ibadah and i may have said it before and i will repeat salah has same place in ibadat what tawhid has in imaniyat inna salata kanat ala al mu'minin kitaban mawquta that we have prescribed salah at its set time qad aflaha al mu'minun alladhina hum fi salatihim khashi'un and after few ayahs allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats wal ladhina hum ala salawatihim yuhafizun ulaika humul warisun alladhina yarithuna al firdaus hum fiha khalidun that these are the people they protect their salah they have khashiya in their salah they improve the quality of their salah and one of the most important requirement to increase to improve the quality of salah is to praying on time and wallahi my brothers and my sister if we develop this habit that as soon as the salah time will come i will stand up and i will pray this will reflect your love your longing towards salah and then allah subhanahu wa taala is going to bring the baraka of the salah in our life the second request i have to improve our salah is to just slow down in salah you know we rush we rush in our salah and we just want to get over with our salah the beauty of salah is the hadith of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam say, he says that every rukun of salah has its haq so when you change from one position to next position let your body relax let your body relax before you move to the next you know move of that salah and wallahi another thing i will say you know if you pay attention our whole salah you know the peak of our salah is our sujood and for that sajda because you are most closest to allah subhanahu wa taala in sajda you know we we do qiyam we do qirat we do ruku all this is preparation for us when we are getting in sajda so you and me we should ask ourselves how much time do we really spend in our sajda because that is the peak of my salah that is the goal of my salah and all qiyam and ruku all that is preparation for me to get down and put my head in front of allah subhanahu wa taala and i will request when you are in sajda make dua to allah subhanahu wa taala through the tongue of your heart you do not have to utter anything through the tongue of your heart the tongue of your heart which can really connect you with allah subhanahu wa taala the tongue of your heart which can bring khashiya in your dua which can make you feel the words you are saying you know through the tongue of your heart my brothers then our sajda will not be of 10 seconds once i am connected in manajat with my rabbul alamin i am making dua i am presenting my needs i am asking the forgiveness from him brothers our sajda will not be of 10 seconds and you will see the quality of our salah will be at different station i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala that he gives you and me this tawfiq that we can improve our sala and this will give us the continuation of the baraka that we will have achieved you know in the month of ramadan before i will close i will share with you couple of you know stories 
to know to understand that what is the importance of the time we are passing through you know we don't have we have and i have said it you know in my previous lecture as well we have iman but we really not have a true yaqeen in our hearts imam ghazali rahmatullah alay one time he was standing you know at one end of he he has given this story that there were some righteous people standing you know at the corner of one tunnel and there was a group of people they had to pass through that tunnel you know the beauty of the examples of imam ghazali is such that he tries to make us understand through these examples and you can forget all of my you know lecture or program by tomorrow but you will not be able to forget the stories that's why putting all those concepts through stories is one of the way of learning so he says there is a group of people they were they had to pass through a dark tunnel and tunnel was so dark that you cannot even see your own hands imam ghazali writes there was a group of people standing on the side of tunnel and that group advised to these people that when you pass through this tunnel whatever pebbles stones they come on your way collect them and put them in your pocket so there were two groups one group said you know passing through tunnel it's a difficulty in itself and now collecting these pebbles another hardship they are asking we will not do that we will just live we will pass through this like you see in this life people say this life is just one time just live this life enjoy it you don't know when you will get it same mindset they say we will pass through the tunnel but we will not collect anything there was another group of people they said you know these are wise people advising something good maybe there is a wisdom so they collected those pebbles after they reached on the other end of the tunnel and they saw under the light these pebbles stones they have collected these were not regular stones these were the most precious stones diamond and gold and now you can imagine now the condition was you cannot go back this tunnel is only one way now you can imagine the condition of the pupil who have not collected any stone they were biting on their arm as quran says on that day they will put their whole hand in their mouth because of the regret because of the hasra and the pupil who have collected these pebbles or stone they were also regretting that why we didn't collect more my brothers and my sisters we don't know the value of our sala our song our hasanat our good deeds but tomorrow when our eyes will close wa abu rabbak hatta yatiya kal yaqeen when we will reach to that moment of yaqeen and we will see as soon as we depart from this dunya that everything allah has promised and prophet has promised in front of us then we will realize the value of this sala the value of song the value of sadaqa the value of relationship with the family the value of helping other you know humanity my brothers and my sisters i will close with the, this uh, story of bahlul you know bahlul was a majnoon in the time of harun rashid harun rashid one day after fajr harun rashid and his wife zubaida they went outside for the walk and they saw bahlul making some mud houses and they asked bahlul what are you doing he said i am making janna houses and harun rashid asked is anybody buying it he said bahlul nobody buys it so harun rashid said that in how much you are going to sell this house of janna bahlul said in 1000 dinar zubaida the wife of uh, harun rashid she says she says to bahlul bahlul i am going to buy one house from you they both went to their palace 
at night time, Harun Rashid saw the dream. And in his dream, he sees a beautiful palace, million times beautiful than his own palace. And he asks somebody in his dream that whose palace is this? And they said, this is the palace of Zubaydah. And he woke up out of his dream and it was so difficult for him to wait for Fajr Salah. He wanted to go out and meet Bahlul. So he finished his Fajr, Fajr Salah and he rushed to Bahlul and Bahlul was still busy making those Jannah houses. And he asked the Bahlul that Bahlul, are you going to sell these houses today? Are these Jannah houses? Yes, I'm going to sell it. For how much? Bahlul said today, the price of this house is whatever your kingdom contains. Harun Rashid said, how come Bahlul? Yesterday you were asking 1000 dinar. Today you are saying the price is whatever my whole kingdom contains. He said, yes, 1000 dinar price was before you saw the dream. And after you have seen dream, even if you give whatever your kingdom contains, still you will not be able to buy the house in Jannah. My brothers and my sisters, I will close with this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not asking you and me too much. Allah is asking, you know, just give me half an hour of your day for salah. Give me just few minutes for this book of Quran and about which I have read the ayah in, in, in the beginning, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling Shifa. This is, this Quran is a Shifa lima fi sudur. This is a Shifa of your Quran, of your hearts. And Shifa is because it will remove all the diseases. Brothers and my sisters, we get physical disease because of our spiritual disease. Wallahi, if we can take care of our spiritual body, you will witness that we will not get those physical diseases we are getting today. Anxiety, depression, and so many different issues. People are dying today more because of depression, because of loneliness, more than breast cancer, because they have lost the vision. They have lost the purpose of life. They have lost the connection with Quran and Muslims are not immune to that. We all are falling in that category as well, my brothers and my sisters. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking you and me just little bit of time. Just he is not asking me to give whatever you have. He is asking just give two and a half percent. My brothers, the day when our eye will close. If I will try like Harun Rashid to buy the Jannah house by giving whatever I have, I will not be able to buy. But today I have opportunity. Today I have a chance. That's why Abu Huraira Razi Ta'ala Anhu one time was passing by a cemetery, Qabrustan, graveyard. And he all of a sudden stopped his animal and he started praying. And some people asked Abu Huraira Razi Ta'ala Anhu, what you did? Why did you stop your animal all of a sudden? He said, you know, when I was passing through the cemetery, Khabrustan, graveyard, I recalled the saying of my beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu that the hasra of a man who will be, or a woman, you know, in a cover, in grave, will be, if I can go out and pray two rakah for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And the one who is inside is, is dreaming, is wishing, and Allah has given me this tawfiq today. That's why I decided to pray immediately. My brothers, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us out, you know, going through this difficult time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq that we can really get the best out of the time we are, you know, passing through and we can get the message. You know, this is a wake up call for all of us, especially for Muslim wake up call that we were going in the wrong direction. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us this tawfiq that we can refocus the purpose of our life and we can live this life with mission, with purpose to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
ان الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته جزاك الله خير um just a, a quick few questions to all and then we can conclude um one question was uh you know how, how do we re- recreate the the environment of ramadan so we have in ramadan we obviously feel uh, you know extra level of iman but let's say you know two three months down the line we feel like we need that iman boost again so how do we create that try to our best to recreate that environment that we feel in ramadan you know, as i said uh, in the beginning of my presentation try to find company of people don't stay just alone try to find brothers can find group of brothers they can join so they can remind each other sisters can find some halaqat as well number 1 number 2 as i have said in my last presentation also is to stay connected with quran so read some tafsir which will motivate you will which will keep you connected and try to read some literature books you know just listening to lectures really is not good enough there is no replacement of book and we have forgotten that the books have become like a history now but book is a comp- is a company which can keep you connected with this deen and allah subhanahu wa taala so select certain books so i will first recommend to you read the history the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that will be the first book i will rec- recommend rahikul maktum is one of the book which i will recommend for your the book of uh, naim siddiq uh, sahab rasul sunnat e rasul and you can find you know rahikul maktum is available you know english translation as well so these are the things which can help us and try to set certain goals for yourself plan you know sometimes we just go very you know, with random plans if you have some road map for yourself that we, what you really want to do and then you follow and review you, your road map as you go that will keep us inshallah connected as well jazakallah khair jazakallah khair and then one last question inshallah and we can conclude um we talked about quran and and salah but one one ibadah is also we increase in ramadan but maybe we fall back uh, or fall down or, or do less of after ramadan is is sadaqa right zakat usually we give in ramadan but just sadaqa so how like how how do we continue that momentum so in ramadan we're more anxious to give sadaqa because we want to give sadaqa on laylatul qadr on the odd nights how do we make sure that even you know 6 months later after ramadan is over that we still give sadaqa because the need for sadaqa is always there the sadaqa is is such a blessing of allah subhanahu wa taala it removes hardship from your life it opens up more windows of mercy of allah subhanahu wa taala for uh, for ourselves brothers this was the practice of our you know previous tabi'in sahaba tabi'in tabi tabi'in our aslaf this was the practice of them after any good deed they used to do they used to give a little bit of sadqa you know sadqa is not necessary that you have to give you know 1000 dollar every day or every time even if you give little bit what you can afford i will say even if you can give a quarter or even if you can give 1 dollar as a token of appreciation that allah subhanahu wa taala has given me this tawfiq that i have done you know this good deed some of the aslaf they used to give sadaqa before doing good deed you know for one of the salaf it comes whenever he used to go to masjid nabi for praying you know salah living in madina he used to go he used to give little bit sadaqa before going for salah because it improves the quality of your ibada so sadaqa is you know win win situation for us in all circumstances and keep this habit you know of giving little sadaqa whatever you can afford as a token of appreciation and also lifting up your duas and br- to bring more barakah of allah subhanahu wa taala in your risk and your deeds jazakallah khair so allah um jazakallah khair for everyone who attended and, and watched this lecture so allah with that we'll conclude i pray that allah subhanahu wa taala allows us to benefit from the talk to, to take practical uh, you know actions as a result of what we listen to i pray that allah subhanahu wa taala gives us the tawfiq to act on whatever has been said uh, in particular this is one of the last nights of ramadan i pray that allah subhanahu wa taala accepts, accepts our fasting our qiyam um our 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 siyam you know all the fasting that we did all all the prayers that we prayed all our tarawih our recitation of the quran i pray that allah subhanahu wa taala accepts that and i pray that allah subhanahu wa taala after ramadan allows us to continue uh, our relationship with the quran 
um, like uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Shail Rafiq was talking about, I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to love the Quran. Allahumma anta ja'ali al-Quran rabi'a qulubina wa nura absarina wa dhahaba humumina wa jala'a hazanina. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik nashadu wa la ilaha illa ant nastaghfiruka natubu ilayk. Wa al-asr inna al-insana lafi khusr illa ladina amanu wa aminu salihati wa tawasaw bil-haq wa tawasaw bil-sabr. Again, Jazakallah khair for coming. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.